Candy. Money. Roses. Sex. Hearts. Fairy tales. Romance. Holding hands. Flowers. Really expensive lingerie. Greeting cards. Love. What do all these words have in common? They're all associated with Valentine's Day. Every year on February 14th, people all over the world decide to show their love to significant others, family, friends, children, or whoever may be important in their lives. In the United States, 62% of adults say they celebrate Valentine's Day. So what does this holiday mean to them? It's a day where it's just all for me. More special than any other day. It's a day where you specify your love for the person you're with or you want to be with by giving them material objects. I think it's sort of overplayed and I think it's overdone. A modern day invented tradition. Single people spending it alone. It's not my favorite day. Special day when you go a little further to present your love to someone and, and let them know how much they mean to you and how special they are. It's a day of love pretty much. So how did this day of love come about? Let's take a brief look at the history of Valentine's Day. Well, the original Valentine's Day is a, is a, is a saint's day, so honoring the early Roman martyr uh, Valentine or Valentinus, a Roman convert to Christianity from the third century uh, who was then martyred by the, the Roman emperor. And his feast day, the day, the day, which basically celebrates the day of his martyrdom, the day of his death, was February 14th. St. Valentine went around converting Romans to Christianity and because of his actions was arrested by the order of Emperor Claudius II. Valentine was interviewed by the emperor and he even tried to persuade Emperor Claudius to become a Christian during the interview. Not a very smart move. The emperor dismissed Valentine and condemned him to death. While he was waiting for his execution day in prison, Valentine healed the blind daughter of his jailer. The jailer begged Valentine to help his daughter and promised they'll convert to Christianity if he did the deed. Valentine held up his end of the deal, and so did the jailer, but Valentine was still executed. After he healed the daughter, that they, they established a relationship, a, a friendship, and that he then writes her a farewell letter uh, before he leaves to be, to be executed, leaves the prison to be executed, uh, in which he signs off as your Valentine. The first Valentine's Day card is born. Along with cards, we associate flowers, jewelry, candy, and stuffed animals as possible ways to put smiles on loved ones on February 14th. The idea of gift giving on Valentine's Day really didn't begin until the 19th century when urbanization and industrialization were taking place. Modern ways of Valentine's Day celebration initially came to life in England. What we most commonly associate Valentine's Day with, right, the cards, the, the chocolates, the like, going out to dinner at a restaurant, it makes sense that all of these practices can't really be that ancient because they, rel they rely on a certain kind of economic and social form of organization that is really modern. In today's world, people sure do love to spend for February 14th. In the U.S., a total of $18.6 billion will be spent for Valentine's Day. The average amount of money men will spend on Valentine's Day is around $150, while women will shell out about $75 for their loved ones. <clears throat> Cheap. The three most given gifts on Valentine's Day are cards, candy, and flowers. Which one of these gifts is a must-have in terms of gifting or receiving? We asked around. Flowers first, then card, then chocolates. It would be card, it would be flowers, and then candy. Yes. Flowers first, chocolate second, and then cards. First would be the card, then the roses, then the candy. Flowers, candy, and then card. Card, flowers, then candy. Flowers, chocolate, and card. Card, candy, and flowers. Flowers, card, then candy. I would say chocolates, then I would say a card, and flowers, I guess. We asked a total of 100 people. 50 females and 50 males. 62% of the girls said their first option in terms of gift receiving on Valentine's Day would be flowers. 66% of the girls said candy was their last choice out of the three gifts. For the guys, 58% said flowers was their first choice in terms of gift giving, while 42% said candy was their last option. Cards came in second for both males and females. 
Greeting cards are the ideal gift for Valentine's Day because it helps you say what you want to say but maybe not have the courage to say or can't put it into writing. I think that it's so nice to see someone's time that they've taken to find the right card and to have their signature in the card and any notes that they want to put in, any added words. It's something that you can keep and that you can look at again and again. A total of 145 million cards are purchased for Valentine's Day. There are over 1,400 different types of Hallmark Valentine's Day cards. You have the best-selling mushy and gushy romantic cards, funny cards, cards with music, cards with motion, cards that light up, blank cards for those who know how to put pen to paper, and there's even cards where you can record your own personal message. Uh, the nice thing about getting a card would be because there's an actual meaning to it. There's a lot that can go into a card. It can say things that you might not have the, the, you know, the stones for. You know, you might be like, I'm a little too chicken to say that, but you got that card and it's like, huh, oh, well, let Hallmark say it for me. The card would be first because it's more sentimental and I can just, it lasts longer. Something big about a card, you look like a cheap ass. <laughs> That's very insulting. I don't think people really treasure cards anymore. It's a little dip more difficult to express your feelings or your emotions in words. I don't like cards. They never say exactly what I want them to say, and they're never perfect. I don't really see a bad side uh, to giving a card on Valentine's Day. If it's poorly written, then it's a bunch of BS. <laughs> if there's no card, it's the bad Valentine's Day for me. The average cost is about $4.99. They range between 99 cent cards and I think our most expensive is $9.99. The more expensive cards have extra features such as three-dimensional aspects, engraved pieces, sound, bigger sizes, more wording, and more decoration. On the other hand, flowers have a higher and wider range of prices. But according to our interviewees, they are a must-have among women. Flowers are the ideal gift for Valentine's because girls go crazy for flowers. They feel love with the flowers. Out of the $18.6 billion spent on Valentine's Day, 1.9 of it comes from flowers. Roses are a top pick for Valentine's Day, and it is estimated that 224 million roses are grown specifically for February 14th. Other popular flower choices on Valentine's Day include tulips, carnations, calla lilies, ranaculas, and orchids. The cheapest flower arrangement is $75. The most expensive, it all depends. You know, sometimes there are orders for like $600 arrangement, $500 arrangement. I like flowers a lot. I like having flowers. They're beautiful. They smell good. Okay. They make a room look great. Different design styles. You don't get flowers every day. That's what the girl is expecting, and it's just, it's cool, it's romantic, and it's, it's original. Flowers would be last. I don't like getting flowers at all. It's just like a gift you give someone to watch die. They attract bugs in the house. You can get little tiny little things on there. They cost too much. Negative about flowers, they die soon, <laughs> especially if you don't take care of them. Here, here's some flowers, now watch it die. That's not such a good metaphor for one's love with one's Valentine, right? That it's all, everything is great in the beginning and then it will, it will fade away. The mortality of flowers always seems to be a weakness, but there are ways to make flowers last a little longer. The more traditional way of doing so would be to get your lazy butt up and give your flowers a fresh cut and fresh water about halfway into their stay with you. Other ways of extending the life of flowers include using hairspray on them or adding materials such as sugar, aspirin, vodka, bleach, or pennies into the water. That's right, a penny will help your flowers last longer. Of course, there are also other floral choices that have longer lifespans. I recommend orchids or plants instead of cut flowers because they will last longer. And flowers will die in a week, orchids will last for over a month or plants will last you weeks. Something else that also has a shorter lifespan is candy, especially if you have a sweet tooth. Americans spend around $448 million on candy the week before Valentine's Day. Chocolate is the front runner out of all the candy choices, and 58 million pounds of it is purchased for February 14th. Consumers love to buy the chocolates that come in the signature heart-shaped boxes and it is estimated that 36 million of these are sold for the holiday.
Uh, something positive about candy is that it makes people happy and it, I think, brings a smile to their face. It is a stimulant, right? So that one of the appealing things for me about, about chocolate is, is that it, it does have an effect that makes one feel better or happier. It's sweet, it's delicious, and I love eating it. I love chocolate. So if you know me very well, then you'll give me chocolate first. <laughs> Women love chocolate. I love chocolate and candy. There's nothing bad about that. The uh, bad part about giving chocolate would maybe a weight thing, you know? Girls are self-conscious about weight sometimes. Usually they sell those boxes and it's like a mix and half of those are awful. I'm not a big candy eater. I, I'm not a real sweets person. I would rather have a bag of potato chips. <laughs> they rot your teeth. <laughs> you get fat. <laughs> Some people can't handle the chocolate. So there you have it. The three most given gifts on Valentine's Day. All three seem to have pros and cons, but according to our interviewees, Listen up, guys. Are you listening? The majority of girls prefer flowers over a card or candy. So maybe now you'll think twice before buying your Valentine's Day gift next year. Or maybe you won't. Or maybe you'll disregard all of our information and go with another type of gift, which probably isn't that bad of an idea. Either way, we're done here. So now, enjoy more Valentine's Day footage and bloopers. Start, can you start over? No, it's fine. Okay. Flowers are the what I received during. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Because yeah, I got it right the first. Time. People, I don't, I don't know because uh, they take it. Wait, what? Hold on. Other than sex? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm so kidding. I didn't say that. She'll not give it to me now. And I get um, lots of love. Lots of kisses, lots of hugs, you know what we like. <laughs> dude, I don't even remember, dude, I lost it. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? I'm gonna repeat it now. He's supposed to get, you cut him and with, with go go. <laughs> Heart has more meaning than a car. I mean, What's bad about cards is if you pick a stupid card and then you write something stupid, it's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Commercialized. <laughs> what did I say? Commercialized? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're having a time today. So okay, my wallet. Quiet! <laughs> <laughs> so damn it, that girl broke my heart. Um, yeah, I felt like therapy right there, didn't I? I felt it. I know you people felt it out there. He was just a jerk. <laughs> so, what, do you guys even know this? You guys do not need to know this. <laughs> very commercial, commercial. Oh, damn. Yeah. I'm the bitch you interviewed. <laughs>